boss bitch right there. I need more books with enemies to lovers where one of them doesn't know that they're enemies. So if you have any suggestions for that, please leave it down below because I need them in my life. everybody it's your girl J and today I am here with my most surprising books for 2022. The majority of these books are surprising to me because I had either low expectations or like absolutely no expectations going into it so I didn't really know what to expect from the books and was just pleasantly surprised with how much I loved them. They are in no particular order it's just kind of the books that I read through the year that I wrote down on my notes app so I guess that's the order that we're gonna go in but without further ado let us get started. The first book that I have is Allure by Alexander Brack. This is on my list because it was the very first book that I picked up in 2022 and I had such low expectations for it because there were such mixed reviews for it and a lot of low ratings but I ended up loving it so much. I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars. I know that a lot of people said that it was very info dumpy with all of the Greek mythology that was getting thrown at you. I think because I am such a huge fan of Greek mythology and I know the myths very well that I didn't find it confusing. I just found it interesting how Alexander Bracken wove these myths into everyday life in New York. I also just didn't expect to fall in love with these characters so much. I'm so sad that this is the only book in the series because I want more of these characters. I just could not get enough of them. And the ending I did not expect, so that was also pretty enjoyable. But like I said, I just was not expecting to like this as much as I did. I was very, very surprised at my feelings towards this book. Definitely one of my favorite books of the year. The next book that I have for this list is The Black Coats by Colleen Oakes. This is one that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about on book two, but I think it is definitely an underrated read. It's another one that I had very low expectations going into and didn't expect much from, but was pleasantly surprised with how much I loved this. It basically follows a young girl named Thea whose cousin is murdered and she is grieving because the killer is going free and there's no justice for them. She then receives a letter that is an invitation to the secret organization called the Black Coats, which have been performing balancings on different individuals who hurt women. Tia becomes the leader for Team Banner, which is a group of four girls who will be exacting these balancings. And as they go on more missions, they learn that they will receive an inheritance, which means that they can go and exact revenge on the person who hurt them the most. But like I said, this one is another one that I just had very low expectations with, and it just turned out to be so much more than I thought it was going to be. I also just really liked the relationships that Team Banner formed with one another, it was just really great to see women supporting women, even if it was through revenge. I had a good time with this book and I definitely think it's underrated, so you should probably pick it up. Just saying. Next up, I have Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This book follows a girl named May who has been orphaned and she ends up living with the very affluent Prosper family. May was born on the island that the Prosper family reside on and she has known nothing other than being at their beck and call. They also possess magical powers so she wants to be a part of that as well. But now she is turning 18 which means that her spot on the island is in danger and so she decides that she is going to cement herself in the Prosper family's lives one way or another. This book is just the epitome of family drama and just so many secrets. The book also spans over one day, which I am usually not the biggest fan of, but with this book, it was so intriguing. I was mostly surprised by this book because when I started reading it, I really disliked May. I thought she was such a weak character and I just like didn't care about anything that was happening to her. But as the story progressed, she just became so strong-willed and you couldn't help but root for her. And in the end, I was like applauding the bitch for getting the job done because like she really did that shit. You have to read the book to know what I'm talking about, but like boss bitch right there. I actually went into this book blind, which is why I think I was so surprised by it because I didn't really have any expectations whatsoever, but pleasantly surprised. Definitely recommend this book. It's kind of like a Great Gatsby vibes, so if you like The Great Gatsby, you might like this. The next book that I have on my list is Cries War by Nina Valera. This is another one I had no expectations going into, but was pleasantly surprised with where the story ended up. It basically follows Automa, which are like robots created by humans in order to serve the queen. 
but then the Automa overtake the humans and a new era starts. So Isla, who is a human servant, is looking for revenge for the death of her family. So she decides that she is going to kill the Sovereign's daughter, who is Lady Cryer. So after a chance encounter, Isla is actually given the opportunity to be Lady Cryer's handmaiden. And so as they spend more time together, she starts to question what she really wants. And it's like that story. I was instantly drawn into this cast of characters. I was obsessed with Lady Cryer and Isla's relationship. I loved how slow burn it was. I found a new trope that I love in this, which is enemies to lovers, which we all knew I loved, but unknown enemies to lovers? Chef's kiss. Like, I... I... I need more books with enemies to lovers where one of them doesn't know that they're enemies. So if you have any suggestions for that, please leave it down below because I need them in my life. I still haven't picked up the second book in this series because I don't own it, so I really need to get my hands on a copy so that I can figure out where the story ends. Not 100% sure if it's a duology or a trilogy, but your girl needs it. Definitely pick this up if you haven't already, although it is one of the more popular ones on my list. The next book that I put on my list is The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth, and this one is one that I had expectations for, but I thought that it was going to go in a completely different direction than it did, and I definitely liked the direction that this took more than what I thought was going to happen if that makes sense. This basically follows two women whose father is about to marry a much younger woman named Heather. The girls are very skeptical about Heather's motives and especially because their mother is in a home with dementia and has no idea who Heather is to their father. So as they spend more time with Heather trying to figure out what her deal is, they realize that she has a lot of secrets, but their father also has a lot of secrets that he has tried very hard to keep hidden and it's like the story of that. The story starts off at the wedding ceremony from the point of view of a mystery guest which I thought was such a smart thing to do because the entire book was just me wanting more of this mystery point of view and trying to figure out who it was and what they actually knew. The ending is also an open ending which I am usually not the biggest fan of but it worked with this book so I was pleasantly surprised about that as as well. This is definitely a slow burn character driven book so if that's not your thing maybe skip it but I am a little bit surprised because Sally Hepworth is a pretty popular thriller author but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this one but I think it's worth it so if you haven't read this take it as your sign to pick this book up. The next book I have is Home Field Advantage by Dahlia Adler. This one I was surprised by because I had just read another book that had a similar plot line but I absolutely hated it with a passion and I I can't for the life of me remember what it was called. If I can remember it, I'll edit it in. It was something about like a transgender man was trying to be class president or something and his ex was in the picture but he was like a dick to the ex. I don't remember what it's called but I hated it. This had kind of similar vibes to that book because it's about a girl named Amber who wants nothing more than to be the next cheerleading captain and she will do anything in her power to get that spot but when the quarterback of the football team ends up dying in a tragic car crash the new quarterback of the team ends up being a very cute girl named Jack who Amber starts to fall for. The team is not the biggest fan of Jack's because they feel that she is taking the old quarterback's place and so Amber has to decide whether or not she is going to stick up for Jack's or if she is going to try to become the next cheerleading captain. I honestly thought that this was just going to be a very fluffy contemporary book but it ended up being a lot deeper than what I originally thought it was going to be. It also features a mother who is bisexual openly, which I really liked seeing because I think that that really helped Amber come into her self-acceptance of liking Jax. This is one that was pretty popular when it first came out, but I never saw anybody really talk about it, more so just Hall. So again, take this as your sign to read this because it is very cute and fluffy, but it also handles some deeper topics and I think it was done pretty well. The next book that I have for this list is Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. This was surprising to me because it is the second book in the Blaze of Secrets it's trilogy, duology, series, not really sure what it's going to be. I read the first book last year, gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, so I didn't really expect much going into this one but oh my god it is so much better than the first book. It picks up exactly where the first book leaves off which was a ginormous cliffhanger. So I love 
loved being able to dive back into the world and it didn't feel disjointed at all. I also just loved seeing these characters again and I feel like they were just so much more developed than the first book. There's also a much bigger focus on war and court politics in this. I was also very surprised because the main character in this book, Ziva, I did not love in the first book but she is so much more likable in this book in my opinion. So if she was a bit of a sore spot for you in the first book, I definitely pick this up because she has so much character development, she's just so much more likable, and also obviously we get more of Kellyan, who I adore so much, so that wasn't a surprise. That was just a very nice added bonus for this book. The next book I have is The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett. This is another one where I had just recently read a book that was so similar to this, Love and Other Disasters, and I had such high expectations for that book, and it just was not what I wanted. This is what I wanted from that book. This follows Amy Chambers, who is a restaurant owner, and the restaurant is starting to fail, so she decides to take a chance on hiring Sophie Burnett, who is a former reality cooking TV show contestant, and she she thinks that if she hires her, maybe her fame will bring more attention to her restaurant. She doesn't expect that they are going to have an undeniable attraction, which is going to cause a lot of tension in the workplace. Then the opportunity to have the restaurant featured on another up-and-coming show comes to light. Amy and Sophie need to start working together in order to bring the restaurant back to life, and it's like their story. Like I said, this is everything that I wanted in that other book. It was such a cute, grumpy, sunshine pair and there was just so much tension and I just loved the longing stares that they had for one another across the restaurant and then when they finally acted on it, it was just delicious. I also think that Sophie was a very relatable character and I think a lot of people will see themselves in her, especially when it comes to her sexuality and her thinking that she is a late bloomer because she's realizing she likes women late into her adult life. I just think that the conversations about self-acceptance and queer identity was really well done in this and it definitely surprised me because that other book was not it. Read this one instead of that one. Alright everybody, so that was my list of most surprising books for 2022. Let me know down below what some of your most surprising books were, or if you read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!